Hello, second grade. We are going to be um, talking today about the scientific method. How many of you know what that is? Now, I'm not sure if many of you know what that is, but that's okay. Because um, we'll learn about it today. So, Miss Santana is going to be doing an experiment sometime this week. Okay, but it's important that we know what the scientific method is before we can do this experiment. Because if we don't know what it is, then we won't be able to um, to follow along. Okay, so let us begin. The scientific method. So today for your assignment, to... Okay, today for your science worksheet, you are going to need, oh, I didn't list it for today. That's okay. That'll be probably for tomorrow then, or not. Okay, that's okay. We'll still go ahead and do this. Okay, so what is the scientific method? So the scientific method, we hear the word method in this, um, this thing that we're talking about, right? And I just wanna ask you, do you have a method of doing something? Do you have a way of doing something? Um, I don't know, maybe when you color a picture, you have a way of doing things. Like Miss Santana, when I color a picture, I like tracing the outside of the picture with like a dark color and then I shade it in. That's what I do. Or let's say when you are baking cookies, do you have a method of how you do it? Do you have a way that you like to do it? Brushing your teeth, is there a way that you like to do it more than another way? So it's a method, it's a way that you do something, right? So we hear the word science in this thing called the scientific method. So scientific method. So it's a way it's a method that we use to ask questions and then get the answers to it, right? Because that's what scientists do. They ask questions and they try to find the answer to it. So we're gonna learn what the scientific method is. And this, like I said, it's a way that we ask questions to find answers, okay? And the way that we do that is that we observe things we look at things, we make sure um, we can see how much they weigh, how long it is, um, and we do experiments. So that's why I'm saying we need to learn what this, this scientific method is first, so that way we can start with our experiment, because Miss Santana has a really fun experiment that we're gonna be doing tomorrow, okay? So um, with a method, let me, let me give you an example. What do we need to make pizza? Oh, something in my head. What do we need to make pizza? Good, we need tomatoes, tomato sauce. We need flour. We need um, water. We need baking powder probably to make it rise. We need yeast. We need pepperoni maybe, we need cheese, um, maybe a little bit of oregano. We need all these things, right? But what if Miss Santana grabbed the flour, put it in the blender, grabbed the pepperoni, put it in the blender, and put everything in the blender, and then went and just started blending everything. And then I poured it into a pan. Would that give me pepperoni pizza? No, it would give me something really gross, right? So when we make pizza, there are specific steps that we have to do first, right? First, we have to make the dough, right? Then we have to stretch the dough. 
And after the dough's ready, then you put the sauce on top, and then you put the cheese, and then you put the pepperoni, right? That's usually how you make pizza. Good. So when we're doing something with science, it's the same way. We have to follow the steps in order if we want it to work. Okay, we can't skip around because if we skip around, we're gonna get mush. It's kind of like if you put all the ingredients in a blender and try to make pizza that way. Okay, so why do scientists use the scientific method? Like, why even use it? Right? Well, scientists use this process, this way of doing things, um, to help them look for the answer to their question. Okay, and um, We've been talking about this, this, this scientific method, and now I'm going to talk about the steps. How do we do this method? What are the steps, right? So the first step to making a pizza is what? Making the dough, right? So what are the steps to answering your question when you're doing, um, when you're trying to figure out something for science? So um, let's continue to, to see what those steps are, okay? So the scientific method has six steps. Boys and girls, how many steps does the scientific method have? It has six, six, a hand and a thumb, six. It has six steps. Can you say that with me? The scientific method has six steps. Good. So there are six steps to the scientific method and all scientists use these steps each time to make an experiment or to test a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a question that we ask. Okay, so how many steps are there in a scientific method? Six. Um, and do scientists sometimes use it or do they always use this method? They always use this method, okay? It's like making pizza, you have to follow the steps. Okay, and you use the scientific method when you're trying to do an experiment, okay? So let's look at each step to help us understand how the scientific method works, okay? So the first step, the very first thing you do when you're um, trying to do an experiment is that you have to ask a question. You have to ask a question, okay? You have to be wanting to know something. When you wanna know something, what do you do? You ask questions, right? So the first step is you ask questions. Okay, the second step is you make observations. So let's say, I want to know, hmm, I wanna know what happens when I let go of this pencil. That's my question. What would happen if I just let go? Would it float or would it fall? That's my question. What would happen to this pencil if I let it go? Would it fall or would it float? Then I have to make, the second step is you have to make observations. I have to look at the pencil. Hmm, is the pencil heavy? Is it light? What color is it? Well, this pencil's red and this pen, or this pen's red and this pen's black. Maybe the red will help it float, and maybe the black will help it float. So I'm making observations. I'm looking at the details of each thing, okay? Number three, we have to form a hypothesis, okay? Um, I'm gonna go through this really quick, and then we'll go, um, we'll go into more detail into these, okay? We form a hypothesis. Number four, we do an experiment, we actually do an experiment. Number five, we analyze the data. Number six, we draw a conclusion. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so we ask a question. Like we just said, have you ever wondered about how something works or why something happens? Scientists do all the time and they ask themselves questions and use science to help them find the answer, okay? So the first step of the scientific method is to ask a question. Your question can be about something you're interested in 
or something you have observed, okay? It can be about something you have wondered about or even something you've researched, okay? Do I, let's see, what could be a question maybe that you've, you've always wanted to know? Do I, I don't know, why do boats do heavy things sink? Do heavy things sink or do they float? That's a question. Okay, these are examples of questions a scientist might ask. Why does, and then you put whatever you're interested in. So why, why do cars run, why do cars um, drive fast? That could be a question. Why do cars drive fast? Right? Why does the sun come out? Why does, why do flowers bloom in the spring? How does a clock work? Let's see, what are some other questions? You can just say them out loud too. How does um, a tree grow? How does a flower grow? How do you make cookies? How do you make a phone? So these are different questions. Which blank makes blank happen? Okay. What will happen when I let go of this pen? What will happen if I throw my shoe across the yard? What will happen if, you know, you can put whatever you want. And then another question could be, how does blank affect blank? How does Let's see, how does doing things in a certain order affect how they taste? That could be a question, right? Can you just blend everything and then it tastes the same? So these are a couple of questions. Let's look at our second one, make an observation. So scientists look at the world around them and they notice things that happen. And scientists observe these events and gather the information to understand why. Data, boys and girls, we're gonna be using that word data, just means information, okay? Okay. Form a hypothesis. This is step number three. The first one is ask a question. The second one is make an observation. And the third one is form a hypothesis. Can you say that with me? Hypothesis, hypothesis hypothesis. Good. So as scientists observe and research and gather information, they gather data, they make predictions as to why something happens. They predict, okay? This is called a hypothesis. When we make a hypothesis, when we write a hypothesis, we're guessing what's going to happen, okay? So a hypothesis is kind of like making a smart um, guess, but it's not a guess. You, you know you researched it. You have um, looked at the information. You have um, learned about something, and then you get to make a prediction. You have your question, and then you try to guess what the answer is going to be. Okay, so that's a hypothesis. You have your question and the hypothesis is guessing what the answer is gonna be, okay? And you almost, you wanna be right, right? So you don't just make up a random funny um, thing, you actually are serious, right? Because you wanna be right. So a hypothesis should explain what you expect to happen. So it should tell us what you think is going to happen with the experiment. Your hypothesis should be tested and measured during an experiment to see if you were right or if you were wrong. So number four, we make an experiment. We conduct an experiment. Conduct means to do. We conduct an experiment. We do an experiment. 
So in order to test a hypothesis, the answer to your question, scientists will make a, an experiment to see if, if their answer is true, right? And the results from experiments tell scientists whether their hypothesis was true or whether it was wrong. We are going to be making, we are going to be doing an experiment tomorrow. And this experiment, I'm really excited. It's about buoyancy. Is that a funny word? Buoyancy. Can you say that with me? Buoyancy. So we're going to ask a question. Do cookies sink or do they float? Hmm. So Miss Santana has bought a couple of cookies. And tomorrow, we're going to do an experiment and we're going to answer that question. Do cookies sink or do they float? So stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be, um, we're going to be making an experiment. So there's an important word that you need to memorize. It's called a variable. Can you say that with me? A variable. I know I'm giving you a lot of information and that is okay. Okay. So, but I want you to remember this word variable and the variable is the one thing you can change in your experiment. So tomorrow, we're gonna have different variables. We're gonna have different types of cookies. So we're gonna have a variable of Oreos. We're gonna have a variable of butternutters. We're gonna have a variable of Chips Ahoy cookies. And we're gonna have different variables, different kinds of things, okay? So let's say you're testing whether marshmallows will dissolve faster in hot water or cold water. Your hypothesis might be marshmallows dissolve faster in hot water. See, you're answering your question, right? So when testing the hypothesis, the variable that stays the same is the marshmallow. Okay, you choose a marshmallow for both tests, okay? And the change variable is the temperature of the water. Okay, so our variable, like I said, will be the same. What's going to change um, is, is our different um, things that we're gonna put our variable in, okay? Okay, so let's analyze the data. Scientists gather information. So step number five is analyzing the data. We have to look at the information that we have and we have to see um, what we got, what, what's our information, right? So let's continue. Scientists write down what is happening during an experiment. And this is called recording the data. So while the experiment is happening, you are writing down what's happening. Um, okay, and then they compare it to what their answer is. And lastly, we draw a conclusion. We, 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 we write down, we don't actually draw it, we write down what um, actually happened, okay? So let's do it. So after an experiment is completed, scientists study the results and what they have learned and they use new information to draw a conclusion about whether their hypothesis was right or wrong. So at the end, you write up a sentence saying, I was right marshmallows do disappear when there's hot water or i was wrong marshmallows actually don't disappear when there's hot water they actually disappear when there is cold water so that would be an example of a conclusion okay so um what i want you to do is fill out your worksheet for today it's lesson five um and um that will be all for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow because tomorrow we will be um, conducting an experiment, okay? So um, stay tuned. And tomorrow we will have a video um, sharing our experiment, okay? Um, God bless you. I will see you tomorrow. And um, God bless. Todas tuas, Maria.